Hello, listeners, and Happy New Year. Here's another special episode of Lateral Thinking Puzzles. These are puzzles where one of us describes a strange-sounding situation and the other has to work out what's going on, asking only yes or no questions. And thanks so much to everyone who's been sending in puzzles for us to try. We always need more, so please keep sending them to podcast at futilitycloset.com. We are off next week, but we'll be back on January 15th with another dose of quirky history and another lateral thinking puzzle. This puzzle is based on a piece of trivia that I heard on the podcast, No Such Thing as a Fish. Why did the owner of a famous racehorse retire the horse from racing, even though it had been winning its races? That's interesting. This is true? Mm-hmm. Retired the horse from racing. Did, mm-hmm. did the owner want to use the horse for some other purpose? Not necessarily. Did the owner hope to make money or gain somehow by doing this? No. Retire the horse from racing, even though it had been winning its races? It had been winning races. its races, yeah. And this is a conventional horse. Conventional horse. What one tends to think of when one hears the word horse. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think of when I hear the word horse. Do I need to know where this happened? No. Or when? No. Is it a horse I've heard of? I, I, I don't know what horses you've that's heard of. That's not a famous horse. Uh, I think it's famous in racehorsing circles, but... <laughs> And I don't know that it. you've heard of it. Okay. So a horse wins a few, wins a number of horse races. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then the owner retires it when presumably it could have gone on to compete in further yes. races and even perhaps have won? Yes. So he's foregoing the winnings by doing this. Right? Not P- sure. Potentially? Potentially. And you say but... he doesn't hope to gain correspondingly by... Right. So he's just giving up money potentially. Potentially. Does the owner... Is the owner's identity important? No. Does the owner have another horse that he hopes to use in... No. ...place of this one? So why do you retire a horse? Do I need to know what happened to the horse after he retired it? Like exactly what happened? No. Is there crime involved somehow? Is he threatened? N- nope. Uh, are there other people involved? N- not, not relevantly. So why would you take a horse out if you didn't have to, if you know it's competitive? Is the horse's health important? No. And you say I don't need to know what happened to the horse after that. Right. Did did something happen in these few races that it won that's significant? I don't even know quite what I'm asking. Was there some accident or something where he was worried about danger? Nothing like that. There aren't other people. Are there other horses? I think I asked you that. Well, I mean, just, you know, there are other horses and people involved peripherally, but that he was racing against, but... But there wasn't some evil horse that had it in for the good horse. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, that's tricky, then. I don't... If he doesn't... If he stands to lose and doesn't stand to gain... Well, that that's the thing. When you said that uh, potentially he could have earned money by the horse winning more races, I would go with only potentially, and maybe not. Was the, But the horse, you said the horse wasn't injured or anything. The it horse was not injured. So from the owner's, the owner expected if it ran again, it might, it have, would have competed. Yes. I mean. Yes. Creditably. Yes. So in that sense, it sounds like it might have won and he might have expected to, to win something as a result, um, I think he expected that the horse would win, but he was losing expectations that he would win anything as a result of the horse winning. Okay, so we're not really talking about the horse. We're talking about the bet, about the the nature of the race? No, not really. But you're saying he personally didn't necessarily expect to profit by this right yes he thought if the horse kept racing he probably wouldn't be profiting from it anymore but he had in the past yes so something changed no something (laughs) well that's hard to say but okay do but i think i asked there's do i need to know more about the 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 nature of the race or just no the way it was conducted or the rules or of the betting or anything so let's just say the horse okay. runs in two. Let's say he did keep the horse going. Okay. And it ran in whatever the next race is. Okay. Um, and one, let's just say. Yeah. Would he have earned as much as a result as he had in the past? No, probably not. That's what he was expecting. Because the, the odds changed? Yes. I guess you'd say the odds changed now that I think of it. So he'll run the horse. Yeah. But the horse, is is that all it is that the horse is doing so well that it's now favored, and so it's less of a 
winning bet? Uh, yeah, it's actually that the horse was winning every single race it was entered into and nobody would any longer bet against it. <laughs> so he couldn't earn anything anymore. That's um, really interesting. Probably. This was a British racehorse named Eclipse because it was born during the solar eclipse of April 1st, 1764. Eclipse is considered to be possibly the greatest racehorse in history as he not only won every one of the 18 races he was entered into, but generally won by a considerable margin of 10 to 20 furlongs or one to two and a half miles. Apparently, oh many famous racehorses trace their lineage to Eclipse. That's a funny problem. It was just such an amazing racehorse. That nobody would bet against it anymore. So he he was just losing the possibility of winning, earning anything from it winning because it was just so good. That's funny. That makes perfect sense once you hear it, but I never would have. <laughs> yeah. That's really interesting. This is from listener Simon Grimes. Two runners set off on a race. After some time, they cross the finish line. One is exhausted, gasping for breath and near to collapse. The other, who has not even broken into a sweat and has a slow, steady pulse, wins the race. How did the winner do this so effortlessly? <laughs> okay. Two runners set off on a race, you said? Yes. And after some time, they both crossed the finish line? Yes. Did Would you say that they both ran the same distance? Yes. They did? Okay. <laughs> I was thinking like one did several laps around and one did only one lap around. But you would say that they both ran the same distance? Yes, I would. Uh, okay. All right. Are they both um, adult humans? Yes. Is there anything about the runners that I need to figure out? Anything specific about the runners? No. No. Anything about where they are? Yes. Ah. Are they at like a high altitude? No. And one of them's more adapted to high altitude no, than the other? No, good guess though. Okay. So it has something to do with where they are. Are they underwater? No. <laughs> are they on the surface of the earth? Yes. Let's go with that. Okay. They are on the surface of the earth, so they're not in space. They're not underwater. Are, are they running up something like running up side of a mountain or anything no no okay so you would say they stay on the surface of the earth the entire race yes and they're running you would say yes by running do you mean what i usually think of as running yes faster than walking using your feet yes <laughs> okay um uh but you said the location matters when you say the location matters do you mean like what continent or country yes aha um, okay. Did this take place in North America? No. In Europe? No. In Africa? No. In Asia? No. Uh, in Antarctica? Yes. <laughs> it took place in Antarctica? Okay. That's a big hint. Um, that's a big hint. Um, were they wearing, was one of them, or were they wearing different gear from each other? Like you would say somebody was wearing something that the other wasn't? No. Or using some device that the other wasn't? No. But it's a big hint that it's in Antarctica. Um, uh, and they're both humans, and they're both running. This yes. isn't like sled dog racing or no, anything. No, that's right. Um, were they running on snow? Uh, on top I guess of so. snow? I guess in let's snow? say yes. That's not important. And it's not important. So it's not like one has snowshoes and one doesn't. That's right. Or one is running on ice and the other's trying to run through snow. Yeah, or... that's, that's not it. Uh, did this really happen? No. Well, oh, oh, not, okay. not that I know of, no. Not some famous race that I need to know about. Um, it, it could have, though. It could have happened. Is the time period important? No. But it needs to well, be in Antarctica. Very, very broadly. Let's not go down that. Did they run at the same time as each other, pretty much? Like yes. they They weren't doing it on different days or in different weather conditions. Yes. They were running at the same time. Yes. So the weather was the same and everything for both of them. That's right. That's right. Uh, but something was obviously different. And you said it's not personal characteristics that I need to know about either one of them. That's right. Or something about their physical fitness or their cold adaptation or anything. No, these are all excellent guesses. Think about Antarctica. What's in Antarctica? <laughs> A lot of snow and Besides ice. Penguins. <laughs> yeah, cold weather. Um, I don't know what's in Antarctica. Uh, polar bears? <laughs> the key is the actual course they ran. The key is the actual course they ran. Um Hmm, but you said, okay, you said it stays on the surface of the earth and mm -hmm. it doesn't go up. Mm -hmm. Does it go down significantly? No. And it, it does it matter what the surface of the course is, like whether it's snow or ice or anything like that? No. Okay. But this couldn't have happened on another continent. But it couldn't have happened on another continent. Well, there's there's one other place it could have happened. <laughs> okay. I'm trying not to be too <laughs> mysterious, but to be intriguing. Are they, and they're not wearing anything special. 
no. or, or l- lacking wearing something special. Um. Oh, oh. Okay. Does it have something to do with? No, you said they ran. They both ran the same distance, That's pretty right. much. Would you say they ran the same course? Yes. But I'll give you a hint by saying they arrived at the finish line from opposite directions. But they ran the same distance. Like if I'd measured, if I'd put a device on each of them to measure how far they'd run, they yes. would have both run the same amount yes. across the same gro- amount of ground. Yep. Oh, one of them's running, I don't know, into the wind and the other has the wind at their back? No. Um... There's, Does it have anything to do with like weather elements or weather type elements? No, actually it doesn't. Is it easier to run in one direction than the other in <laughs> Antarctica? And I just don't I, know I'll this I'll give you fact. another hint. <laughs> the, the total time, running time for each of them was reckoned by taking their starting day and date and oh. reckoning the, the difference between that and w- when they finished. Oh, okay. And so the direction that you run, you're crossing date lines or timelines or yes. something. So you're very close now. the The person who was considered to have won didn't need to go as fast because that person figured out that they were going to be crossing the date line in such a way that, like, they'd gain a whole day on the other person, so they could go real slow. Yes, that's basically it. Is that basically it? Simon writes, by running around the South Pole in opposite directions, one crosses the international date line going west to east and has thus gained a 24-hour handicap. No matter how fast they run, they have no hope of matching their opponent, who takes a leisurely stroll. Simon adds, This athletic conundrum was suggested to me by Dr. Hal Lister, glaciologist on the Commonwealth Trans-Antarctic Expedition, 1955-1958, to who ran our scientific program on the Greenland ice cap. Wow. This puzzle comes from Jean-Yves, who thankfully provided me with some very helpful pronunciation tips. A murderer is convicted on the basis of witness testimony. The judgment is sound and well-founded, despite the fact that when the crime was committed, there wasn't a single person around to see it other than the murderer and his unfortunate victim. Wow, that's interesting. Is this true? Uh, It's based on a true story. Okay, so someone's convicted of murder Mm -hmm. on the the basis of witness testimony. Uh Uh-huh. And yet, there, is it accurate to say there were no witnesses to the crime? Um, I'll say that's inaccurate. Okay. It would sort of have to be. <laughs> um, but you're saying, okay, so someone was murdered. Let's start yes. with that. One person killed another person. Yes. Um, and you're saying the person who, someone testified that they saw this, witnessed it in some way, right? I wouldn't completely agree to that. <laughs> okay. Someone killed another person. I'll agree to that. Were there witnesses to the crime? I guess I'll say yes. Human witnesses? No. Ah, there we go. Is it a parrot? It is a parrot. <laughs> did you hear did you hear this no, story? I, I mean I've heard there are such cases. <laughs> You just seem so shifty. I thought it had to be some kind of animal or something. It just makes no sense otherwise. Yeah, the witness was a pet parrot who was found repeating the victim's begging for mercy in the victim's <laughs> voice. And Jean-Yves says, this is based on the following true story. Martin Durham lived with his wife, Glenna, and their pet parrot. During a heated argument, Glenna decided to kill her husband and commit suicide. She shot her husband and herself in front of their pet parrot. But while her husband died, she survived her gunshot wound and claimed she remembered nothing of the event. When the investigators found them, they also found the parrot reciting parts of their last argument, including the clear words, don't shoot, in Martin's voice. Oh, my God. The puzzle does diverge slightly from the true story, however, since the parrot's testimony was not, in fact, relied upon in court. You know, that's amusing, but it's also an awful story. That's terrible that that really happened. Yeah. Yeah. This is from Kyle Hendrickson's 1998 book, Mental Fitness Puzzles. Alfonso was taking an important exam. Although the examiner was standing 20 feet away and had his back turned, he interrupted Alfonso by saying, you can stop right now. I know you're cheating. What led to Alfonso's undoing? Oh, goodness. Okay. He had his back turned. Did he hear something? No. Would you say that he saw something even though his back was turned? The examiner? Yes. Mm, No. And I'll change my answer. Okay. For did he hear something? 
Yes, he heard something. Yes, he heard something. <clears throat> he heard something that Alfonso did or produced, a noise that Alfonso produced. Yes. Was it Alfonso's answers? Yes. Okay. Uh, does it matter what kind of exam this was? Yes. Okay. Was this, is this the type of exam that you would take in a normal academic setting like college or high school or university? Or, no. No. Was this a driving exam? That doesn't make sense. You wouldn't have your back turned to somebody. No. Was this some sort of a performance exam, like a performance of music, like you're trying to perform music? Oh, no. Good guess. No. Um, but it's an exam. Would you say it's an exam to get like a professional license? No. Or to get some kind of a degree or uh, certification? N- no, I wouldn't quite say that. No. Okay. Not to get a degree or a license or a certification. Alfonso. Does it matter when this happened? No. Where? Uh, no. Uh, does it matter what method Alfonso was using to cheat? That would help, yes. I was going to say, was he using some sort of electronic equipment of any kind, would you say? No. Ah, shoot. I thought he was like providing yeah. his answer or whatever with something electronic. Okay. Um, but it would matter how he was cheating. Was he... Was his method of cheating, did it involve somebody else? No. Somebody trying to feed him answers or help him out in some way? No. But he was still cheating. Was he trying to pass off something? Was he taking a drug screening test? No, you're coming up with great <laughs> guesses. I wish I could say yes to these. Oh, man. Full credit, but no, that's not <laughs> and it. he's supposed to be like urinating into a cup and the guy heard something <laughs> that let him know. Like, he was like no. pouring. Oh, darn. That was that's, that's such a, a good answer. That's a perfectly that's good That's why answer. the guy would have his back turned, yeah. too. I mean, that's very good. Darn. Um, okay. Was he taking some kind of medical? Would you say any kind of medical or health-based exam? Uh yeah, generally, yeah, I'd say no. I mean, you wouldn't. You could really bend over backwards <laughs> and say yes, but okay. With, but you're not terribly far off with not that. terribly far off um, with medical or health based, um, but screening for something like um, something along the lines of like drug testing or drug screening, like vaguely along those lines. No, nothing. Not nothing testing like for that. some criminal. Activity. Right, but like I don't know, testing to get you into like the military or something. Yes. Oh, he was trying to get into the military. He was trying to get into the military. Um, whatever he was doing, would normally the examiner have their back turned, or was this just set up that way for the puzzle? No, I think uh, I think you could say that that normally the person would have his back turned. Was he trying to do something that you would say was? Uh, physically exertious like some sort of exercises or no but it was the test was designed to uh, test his fitness evaluate in some his way? fitness yeah his in sort some of way. His, some physical ability that was he, he supposed was to be reading an eye chart yes uh and and how did the guy know that he was cheating on the eye chart like somebody had given him the answers and he was reading the wrong line or reading them off too quickly or you're terribly close i could just he, give it to he you. was trying to pretend he could read the eye chart better than he was able to read the right eye and chart. how might how might you do that um, how much you prepare yourself to pass an exam like that if you didn't really qualify that somebody also did it's not that somebody else gave him the answers um uh, he was doing it with his glasses on and they were supposed to be off or he was reading the wrong line or he was just making it up and hoping that the doctor didn't know what yeah, the You're so close. I'm just going to give it to you. Alfonso was undergoing an eye examination required for entering the armed services. The examiner knew Alfonso had memorized the chart because the examiner had recently begun using a new chart and unfortunately for Alfonso, he had oh. memorized the outdated one. <laughs> But you're close enough. I didn't know you could get a hold of them in advance to memorize them. That's a good tip. Plus, you get bonus credit for all the other perfectly valid (laughs) answers you thought up along the way. This puzzle comes from Alex Baumans with a minor rewording by me. In 1943, a military research laboratory at Wright Field, Ohio, was under investigation by the FBI in connection with a bank robbery. They turned out to be completely innocent. What had happened? Wow. I guess this is true. This is true. Okay, what kind of facility was it that was under investigation? It was a military research laboratory at Wright Field, Ohio. Okay, in connection with a bank robber. Yeah. Um, do we need to know where the robbery took place? Was there anything unusual about... Okay, obviously there's something unusual about how the robbery was carried out. No. No? No, there was not. And I'll say the, 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 the robbery took place locally. Locally Near the base. to where the research laboratory was, yes. 
So they suspected that's actually that, important. They suspected the people from the lab had participated in the robbery. They suspected that, yeah, they suspected that the people in the lab had helped facilitate the robbery. In some technological way? Yes. Okay. All right. But you say it was a sort of a conventional robbery? I mean, it was... A, it was. Did it, All right. The, 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 there were robbers. There were people who went into a bank. Yes. And demanded money. Yes. Do I need to know how many of them there were? No. And I actually don't know a whole lot about the bank robbery itself. And was it successful? They got... Yes. The money. Yes. And it was because it was successful, and one of the reasons that it was successful, that the FBI thought that the research laboratory had been helping them. Okay. Had helped them out. Does this have to do with the weapons that they were using? No. Um, Does this have to do with something to do with identification? No. Bank. Did Did the military facility use this bank? I don't know. Possibly not. Possibly not. Um... Does this have to do with what they did with the money afterward? No. Is there any connection to the police or law enforcement here being involved or corrupt or anything like that? No connection to the peace, police or law enforcement being corrupt. Apart from the FBI. You said the FBI was investigating the... Right. So that's... I, I, I guess I'm confused. Ask your question again. I'm just trying to feed, figure out what, <laughs> what the connection is between... Right. Um, what, what led them to consider that the, that the research lab had been helping them. Okay. So I, it sounds like I need to know what the lab was working on. Yes. That would, that would help or figuring out how, um, what happened around the robbery that made them think that the lab was involved. Did, okay. Either way. So there, they would say, the FBI would say that they suspected that the lab had helped Yes. Somehow. Yes. In some phase of the robbery. Yes. But it sounds like it's not in the robbery but, itself. Right. Actually, that's a very good question. Yes. In the getaway? Yes. <laughs> okay. Does this have to do with trace? Okay. You said it doesn't have to do with the, what happened to the money. So they didn't trace right. the money to the lab. Right. Does it have to do with the vehicle they used? No. Did they use a vehicle? Yes. Okay. So oh, they, actually, I don't even know. I, I take that back. I actually know very little about the robbery right. itself, which so, says none of the details about the robbery itself were important. All right. Well, this is getting somewhere. Yes. So one or more people robbed a bank in yes. some mostly conventional way and then yes. got away successfully with some money. Yes. Perhaps in a vehicle. Yes. Let's assume they did. Um, in, At, a, in a way that seemed to implicate... Not in a way that something that happened during the getaway made the FBI suspect the research lab. Did they interact in some way with... Did who? Who was they? The the robbers. Okay. Um, in some way on the road with someone else. Let's start with that. No. As a matter of fact, any question starting with, did the robbers interact in some way? The answer is going to be no. <laughs> oh, it was an automated vehicle that... No, no, this was 1943. <laughs> that would be great. That would be great. <laughs> okay, so they fled. It. Yes. So wait a minute, let's back up from okay. what you just said. Any question that starts with how the robbers behaved? Right. Would, would, I'll, I'll just say not relevant to. Were the robbers human? Yes. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> But, but it's a question nothing about, that the robbers did. As a matter of fact, the robbers probably didn't even know any of this was going on. Because the, the, the research lab was innocent. They were not collaborating with the robbers, right? Mm-hmm. And the robbers probably had no idea that anything was happening that accidentally helped them out. Like they had probably no idea about any of this. Accidentally helped the lab out? No, accidentally helped the robbers out. But something conceivably did. Something the lab was doing. Something the lab was doing. To, happened to help the robbers. Happened to help the robbers. Exactly. And so the FBI thought it was deliberate. Okay. Did the, did and it this, involves the getaway. This event, whatever it was, did it somehow occupy the local police that, to prevent them from... It didn't occupy the local police, but it did prevent the local police. Yes. Okay. So some test or something they were doing at the lab. Yes. Messed up the local police. Stopped the police from pursuing them on the road? Um, let's say hindered the police from pursuing them on the road. Something technical or technological that affects yes. their cars? Hmm. Their Car- weapons? N- no. Their information no. in any way? Yes. Uh, the radios? Yes. 
Something the lab was doing interfered with yes. the police radio so yes. they couldn't effectively pursue the robbers. Yes, that that's good enough. That's exactly, let's say, let's go with that. That's exactly what happened. Alex says, the team at the lab was working on an airborne communications jammer, the ART-3 Jackal to be precise, which was to disrupt German tank radios. Unfortunately, several Ohio police forces used the same frequency band for their car-to-car communications as the German tanks did. It so happened that during one of the test flights, there was a bank robbery. The robbers managed to get away because the police radios had been rendered useless by the jamming signals from the plane. The FBI found out where the jamming signals had come from and being suspicious people instigated a full scale investigation to see whether it was a true coincidence or whether someone on the research team had been in contact with the robbers. The research team turned out to be completely innocent. And now they at least knew that their device worked under practical conditions. That does look pretty guilty from the police (laughs) point of view. Exactly. But I'm saying like the robbers had no idea. Like they they would not have ever even known that this was was happening. happening. Yeah, that's good. Alex also said, you have to feel for the guy in charge of the project. That would be a certain Lieutenant Colonel George Holler. Here you are developing something that will aid the Allied war effort. Tests are going well, and you are congratulating yourself on a job well done. Then suddenly you have the FBI in your office asking if you know something about jamming police radios. (laughs) This is a story that's told about the Scottish mathematician John Napier. He knew that one of his servants was stealing from him, but he didn't know which one. So to find the thief, he told the servants to go, one by one, into a dark room where they would find a psychic rooster. He told them they had to pat the rooster, which, being psychic, would detect the thief and tell (laughs) Napier. The rooster wasn't really psychic, but this scheme (laughs) helped Napier catch the thief. How? (laughs) I like the psychic rooster. Um, Okay. So the servants had to go one by one into a darkened room and... And pat a rooster. And pat a rooster, basically. Is there anything important about the padding? Yes. Really? They they had to pat the rooster? I was going to like just, okay, let's just cross that off, you know, like like get that out of the way. No, that is important. They really had to pat the rooster. Well, if the story is true, I have no idea, but Okay. So they had to touch the rooster, basically? Or did it have to be padding? No, touching is enough. Okay. Um, Okay. Maybe I need to understand what they were stealing. Would that help? No, actually It doesn't matter what they were stealing. No. But they had to touch a, a live rooster. This yes. was actually a live rooster, and 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 the person would, would did he expect them to have something on their fingers? Yes, and I'll tell you, he had prepared the rooster by coating it lightly with soot. Um, this is before the age of fingerprinting, so I'm imagining that. <laughs> yeah, that's not it. So they he expected them to have something on their fingers that soot would stick to, and then he could just look and see who had sooty hands right. afterwards. Mm-hmm. So what did he... Ex- oh, he expected them to be sweating because no. they would be nervous. Oh, good guess. No, that's oh, not it. Oh, shoot. Like an early lie detector test, right? <laughs> if you're sweating and you get soot on your hands from the psychic rooster. Um, actually, I don't know. What, what time period is this? Does I it matter? I think it's the 17th century, curious. but it doesn't matter. Would have been a very early lie detector test. Yes. Okay, so he expected that the thief would have something on his or her hands. Does it matter the gender? No. Are there any other characteristics about the thief that I need to work out? No. So he was just going to ask each one to show his, his or her hands after they came out of the closet, and then the one with the soot on their hands was the guilty party. No. No. The one without the soot on their hands was the guilty party. Yes. Oh, I got this backwards. So the thief would have something on his or her hands that would prevent soot from sticking to it. No. The thief would have gloves on? <laughs> <laughs> no. The thief had no hands. Um. Okay, so he was going to have everybody come out of the closet, mm-hmm. and he was going to check their hands. Right. And the one with the clean hands would be the thief. That's right. Um, the question is, why would that be? Why? Oh, 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 because the thief wouldn't want to touch the psychic rooster. Exactly. <laughs> Napier had coated the rooster with soot, and this appeared on the hands of the innocent servants. The guilty one, who hadn't dared to touch it, was the only one with clean hands. <laughs> so this this relied on everybody believing that there were psychic yeah. roosters. For all I know, this is a true story. I'm just assuming it's apocryphal. Maybe they did this all the time back then. <laughs> well, if anybody else has a puzzle they'd like to send in for us to try, whether it involves psychic animals or not, you can send it to us at podcast at futilitycloset.com.